Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are playing another chess game. Let's go ahead and play e5 here. We're gonna start off with a normal opening and let's see what we get. Our opponent is playing the Vienna. A very, very normal chess opening. Let's start with our move knight to c6 here. And my opponent is playing kind of a Vienna slash bishops opening. It's a very common opening, just developing the pieces. I'm going to develop my bishop to b4. I need to play quick because I need to remember that um, it is a 10-minute game and there's no increment. So I'm, I'm pushing my pawn in the middle of the board, and I am then going to protect my knight in the middle of the board with bishop to e6. See how my opponent handles this position. My next moves might be castles. I might even take this knight on c3. Let's see what my opponent has. A normal move is bishop to d2. I think there's another move, knight to e4 here is also a move that he can play. I guess potentially he could play a3 as well, but I don't know if that's all that good. Bishop to b5. Interesting move. Trying to pile up pressure on my knight on c6. Hmm. Should I protect this? Should I go for a move like knight to e7? I don't think it makes too much sense to defend this knight on c6. If he wants to capture it and double my structure, I'm going to allow him. Okay. Okay. Let's think about this. I could capture on c3. He'll probably capture, we'll capture again, capture something like this, takes, 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 takes. And then maybe play, maybe knight to e7 there, just backing my knight up and maybe trying to go after his bishop. Let's go for this. I need to play quickly because I need to remember that this is a blitz game. Now, I can also play for a move like knight to a5 to try and harass this bishop on b5. Maybe trying to kick it around. Let's go for this idea. Let's go for this idea. I need to remember that he can play d4. Hmm. So maybe let's start with a move like queen d6. Maybe. He goes a4. It's very weird looking. a6. Hmm. Bunch of interesting options. I can go a6 as well, but then I, I get this damage structure. I'm not really looking for that. Knight to a5, d4. Let's go for this queen d6 move. Just protecting the knight. I don't know if this is correct, but we'll see. We'll see what my opponent tries to go for. Okay, my idea now is to go knight to a5. I can also move, I can also defend the pawn. Let's go f6, a very stable, uh, solid move here. It does undefend my bishop, which is something I need to be careful about. You know, some idea like rook sacrifice and bishop c4. It's always a scary idea I need to be careful about, but I can always back my bishop up if I need to. I'm stabilizing this pawn in the middle of the board and it looks decent. I got to remember to play fast. <laughs> it's always the thing I forget about um, in these no increment games. I have to get back up on the clock, so I'm going to be trying to play a lot faster. One of the main moves I'm looking out for next is going to be playing a6 and b5 or play a move like knight to a5 and then start trying to attack the bishop. Also, maybe moving my rook to the middle of the board to improve its position. That seems pretty normal, too. Okay, um, maybe now we try to take advantage of this bishop. Maybe now we play, we move the knight to e7 maybe. Hmm, we can also attack with a6. Maybe knight to e7 and then we get ready to kick the bishop. But then he can still play d4, hmm. 
<laughs> I need to play quick move. Need to go quick here. Let's back the bishop up to f7. I want to get this bishop out of the firing line of this rook on e1. I don't want this bishop to be attacked. So I'm going to play a little bit of a passive move. To be honest, maybe it's not the best because now my opponent plays queen f3. Dang it, I always miss kind of uh, simple moves for my opponent. And now, you know, he's putting pressure on this knight. I want to move it and start attacking the bishop on b5. I want to play knight a5, but then he's going to play c4. Be very annoying. But I have a tactic there. I could take on c4. Whoa, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Does that work? I'm going to go for this idea. It's an interesting idea. If I can force it to work, then maybe my position's not all that bad. C4. Knight takes C4 because this bishop is undefended. Okay, but I just saw something that really makes me upset that I missed. C4. Knight takes C4. Bishop B4. Okay, but I have C5. Wow, this position's complicated. <laughs> um, if he was able to get his bishop out of danger, then he'd be able to eat my knight knight in the middle of the board. So I got to be really careful. But if I if he gives me some time, guys, I'm going to just attack his bishop and his bishop's going to be in a bad spot. So this is a crucial move here for him. He has to come up with something really important. C4 is my first thought. I'm going to take it. Maybe pawn takes. I can take the bishop. Maybe he just plays rook d1 and gets like a really aggressive attack going. I would take the pawn. I don't know. Really crazy position there. But should be good for me. I'm taking a lot of his pawns. A lot of his pawns. So we'll see how this kind of goes. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, he plays d4. Wow. This is a very interesting idea. It's pinning, he's pinned here, so he can't really um, take my pawn in the middle of the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and trade these bishops off the board. If I can trade the bishops, this position should be good for me, positionally. So I want this knight on the c4 square versus that bishop. If I can achieve that, my, my knight looks to be better than the bishop. Which sometimes that's all you're asking for in positions, just to have a better piece than the other opponent. And that can be really, really strong, so... Good thing I'm playing quickly. I've almost got even on the clock with this guy, which is important. Trying to exchange these bishops off the board. And then maybe I can just activate my pieces with rook. Rook to the middle of the board. Just get them in the game. Would look pretty good. Let's see what my opponent can go for here. I need to be careful that this queen is attacking this pawn if this knight moves. Okay, I was not expecting that at all. I can just play b5 here. I don't really understand this idea. Don't really get this one. b5. I don't get it. I'm just going to play b5 after takes. I'm going to be able to take this, this pawn, and then I'm going to be able to to attack both the rook and the bishop on d2. So this seems like um, a free pawn and probably more than just a free pawn, a little bit more actually. So I'm gonna take with the bishop, I'm gonna take with the knight, hit the bishop and hit the rook. So he's gonna have to move the rook. Okay, he does it in a, in a little bit of a worse way. <laughs> um, could just capture the pawn in the middle of the board as well here. This also looks very strong. I'm just going to capture the pawn. And I'm going to capture the pawn right in the middle of the board. I have this move c5, which is a pass pawn here. Pawn that has no pawns in its way. If I can just push up the board, I'm going to be 
pretty much just winning. The rook on a2 looks really stupid. So we can go rook e8 and attack his rook as well. We'll see where he puts his queen. We'll see where he puts the queen. There's not a lot of good squares for it, though. Hmm. There is a sneaky idea of bishop before that I need to be careful about. Okay, he puts it on h5. All right, guarding the e8 square. Smart. Okay, and he's also setting up bishop b4. So not going to allow that to happen ever. So let's go c5. Pushing my pass pawn down the board. My knight in the middle of the board is definitely better than this bishop. And let's continue to improve. Maybe we go rook e8. I need to play quickly. Let's go rook e8. Pinning this rook. Probably should just swing my other rook into the game. It's kind of a, not the easiest um, idea or the easiest thought process of where to put my rooks here, but I'm just trying to go off of intuition. Now I'd like to get this knight out of this pin. Don't want to be in a pin. So I can move the queen to like, let's say e6 and attack the, the knight or attack the rook on a2. And I have a sneaky idea here. I'm trying to move my knight and put some pressure on this bishop on e3. So potentially, if like a move like rook d2, I was thinking knight f5, maybe to attack the bishop, and I have a sneaky idea of trying to checkmate him on the back row. Also, this move knight b3 comes to mind as well to protect the pawn on c5, but I think my idea is actually better because it also cuts the connection off of the queen. The queen can no longer see the pawn on c5. If he captures, I have this checkmate idea. So very sneaky approach. I still maintain my pawn uh, on the board, which is really useful. And if I could push it up the board, support it with a rook, the position's gonna be really, really good for me. I just need to make sure that I don't run out of time and I don't hang any uh, sneaky tricks. You know, gotta be careful. He protects the bishop, but he also pins it. Let's support the pawn down the board, guys. Now I'm getting ready to push this pawn all the way down the board because it will be, I'll, I'll force my opponent's pieces to be passive if he focuses on this pawn. So he'll either have to put his rooks in front of the pawn or he'll have to be, you'll have to do something not smart in order to defend. So c4, he moves the bishop. Hmm. Maybe I should just move my queen here. Don't want to get hit with this discovered attack. Let's give the queen a little kick here. G6. I want to set up queen e4 with an attack on the queen, which is going to give my queen a little bit more freedom in this position. You know what? Does he have bishop takes c5 here? I'm going to be really mad if I made a mistake here. I don't think I did because I could take, he takes, and then I can take and take on c5. Anyway, I can play queen e4 here now, I think. Double checking if I can play this. I don't want to blunder something stupid and, and allow my opponent to get away with some sneaky tricks. Queen e4 takes on c5, takes on f3, takes on e8, king f7, takes on c8. 
I don't know if I need to allow any of this. I'm just going to go queen c6. Avoid all of the tricks. I guess he can, he can't do this. No, 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 because I can take on e2. I just need to be double. I just need to be really careful. There's a lot of tricks in this position. This rook is not really well defended. Okay. Now let's play queen e4. Way less tricks now because the queen is undefended. So it really can't do anything in this position. And then I can just keep pushing the pawn to c4 and c3 and push all the way down the board. I do have a, two minutes on the clock and that's two minutes with no extra time. So I have to be very careful and play quickly. Attacking the queen. I think he's gonna play queen h3. If he trades queens, he's pretty much dead lost here. He cannot trade queens and survive. You know, I wasn't even thinking about a move like bishop f4. It's a very tricky move. Okay, I've got to play queen c6. My opponent's being tricky. Okay, we're going c4, guys. Push the pass pawn down the board. Let's distract my opponent with this pass pawn. Simple strategy. We're playing quick. We're going to distract my opponent with this pass pawn. We want to defend my king though, just a little bit. Don't let him take on g6 or anything crazy like that. He's gonna have to worry about this pass pawn. My nine on f5 is glued in the position. He can't kick it away with g4. It would weaken his king a lot and currently his queen's on g4, so. Could play a move like queen c4 to try and trade queens here. It's a useful move or just push my pawn down the board again. can even play a5 and b4 to support it. That's also a very simple strategy to just keep supporting this pawn down the board. Okay, he captures, but I don't think he's stopping my pass pawn going down the board. I don't think he's stopping this. How is he stopping this pawn? Is he gonna put his rook in front of it? This bishop is undefended, so there might be some, some strategies to attack it. Something like here, to aim at the bishop and maybe come down the board to d1. It's very dangerous here. I think my opponent's probably gonna crack under the pressure here. This pawn is too hard to deal with. Yep. And now I'm going to go for my strategy of putting my queen on d7. Maybe not the best move. Okay. And now I go for queen d1 and this move works. If he captures, I make a new queen and win his rook. If he blocks, I take his queen on g4. So this wins immediately. And now I can swing the rook into the attack here, winning the game. And I take all of his pieces. Nice. That was a nice game, guys. But I played at a 90.3% accuracy, so pretty decent. But let's see where my opponent went wrong. I think the game was very interesting. Maybe I went wrong in this game too. Let's go back to the opening. I know that these are pretty much book moves. Bishop to e6. And... I think bishop e6 is a book move, but now that I'm thinking about it, I know there's some other moves as well. I think the main move that I'm actually, uh, one of the main moves is take on c3 as well. So my opponent went for bishop b5, but to be honest, I didn't really care too much. I just captured on c3. I captured. I just tried to defend my position with this move, trying to, um, in general, put some pressure on my opponent and attack him. I think this was the moment where this is a very critical position here. And I just don't think my opponent found a very good move. He went d4, bishop c4, and bishop a4. I think I was thinking along the lines of c4 here, trying to open this bishop up and attack my knight. I could play this move, but then maybe he captures, and then maybe he swings this rook into the attack, and he has uh, attacks on b7, and maybe he can swing his rook into the game. 
It's very aggressive, very, very interesting. I'm not too sure, guys. I'll probably give you an update in future episodes. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next episode. Have a good one.